Hello booktube, welcome to Revenant Reads, I'm Vin, and this is a quick video where I give recommendations about books pertaining to women's history for Women's History Month. Okay, so this was kind of a, a last minute idea for a video that I decided I want to get one more video in before it became too cold to be outside and go in. Um, so I'm going to make this fairly quick. And some of the books I'm going to be talking about and recommending, I read a while back. So my memory is not entirely fresh on these things. Uh, but of course, if you're intrigued, you can always go look them up yourself and see if this is what you want. Uh, the first three um, kind of pertain to American history more generally. Uh, and the last three are a lot more connected to uh, the horror genre, uh, which of course is one of my, my passions. Um, that's why my coffee mug out here uh, with the podcast logo, uh, Horrorcast Jack. Um, so the first one, and it, the first three I'm, I'm kind of presenting in chronological order uh, based on the time period in which they're discussing women. Um, and all of these books are older. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm bringing them out here is because uh, I think it's less likely that a lot of YouTubers, um, or booktubers I, more specifically, <laughs> uh, would have come across these and read them. Okay, uh, so the first one is Damned Women, okay, Sinners and Witches in Puritan New England by Elizabeth Reese, Rice, I'm not sure, uh, by Cornell University Press. This was published in 1997 originally, and it's not it's not in a terribly um, long read, uh, but what I really like about it is it looks at gender in Puritan New England, and it looks at the it, it seeks to ask the question: Why were women more likely to be uh, accused of witchcraft? Um, but not only that, why were women more likely to confess to being accused of witchcraft? What was it about their ideas about men and women, and men's and women's bodies, and men's and women's souls? Um, that they believe made women more susceptible to signing the book with the devil. Uh, so I really like this study. The last part, she kind of does this um, this look at uh, Young Goodman Brown by Hawthorne. Now the wind is, wind's going to pick up now. Uh, and it, it's a really great take looking through that and seeing it through Puritan eyes. Uh, Hawthorne was not a, a Puritan, but that book does allow a really great um, window into Puritan attitudes and uh, their thoughts. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one, this was published, I think, around 1990. Uh, this is A Midwife's Tale. Uh, did win the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, the Life of Martha Ballard, based on her diary, 1785 to 1812, by Laurel Thatcher Ulrich. And uh, this was published by Vintage. Um, and what this is, uh, this is a woman who was a, a midwife, okay, Ballard. Ballard um, she lived in Maine uh, during, during this time, 1785 to 1812, and she kept a diary. And what this historian does is look through her diary and do the historical background of the things that she's talking about in the diary. Um, and it's a, it's a terrific look at women's lives in New England at this time. And some shocking things happened. If I remember correctly, it's been, a, been quite a few years since I read this, but uh, I think one of Martha Ballard's neighbors takes an ax to his family. Uh, and she's one of the people that has to go clean it up. Um, so, you know, if, if you think that this was going to be a boring read about a midwife, it, it's not. Uh, it's got all kinds of stuff, all kinds of intrigue. Uh, so I highly recommend this one. And the last one, before we get into the you know, fictional horror, that was some real life horror, is um, City of Women. This is the oldest book out of the three. This was published in the mid-80s. Uh, Sex and Class in New York, 1789 to 1860, by Christine Stansel. And this one's from University of Illinois Press. And uh, what she's doing is looking at the lives of lower class women, especially, like prostitutes, you know, Irish immigrant women, um, and looking at how they functioned in New York City, right, in the lead up to the Civil War. Um, and it is just a, a very good book. It, to, for me, this is like a page turner. Uh, I found this really fascinating stuff. Um, you know, she was giving a voice to people who often did not have a voice within history. Um, so highly recommend this one. And the next three relate to horror. Uh, the first one is kind of just more fun, general read. It's more of a reference book. And I did see this just recently pop up on another booktuber's video, but I don't remember who it was. So I apologize if you see this and it was you. Uh, but this is Monster, she wrote. Uh, the women who pioneered horror and speculative fiction. Uh, fiction. Speculative fiction. It's getting cold and it's getting harder to talk. Uh, by Lisa Kroger and Melanie R. Anderson. Um, 
And uh, this is published by Quirk Books. It's a nice, nice little naked hardcover copy. Um, I love the illustrations on this. And the insides also have illustrations in them. And really, it's, it's really a reference book for all the different women who were writing, um, who helped to, you know, as it says, pioneer horror, sci-fi. Uh, so it starts off all the way with um, Margaret Cavendish, Cavendish and uh, Anne Radcliffe. You've got your, you know, your British Gothic. Uh, all the way through to um, some of the women who were writing more recently about haunted houses, the apocalypse, serial killers. Um, so if you wanted to pause, you could see all the different names that are on there. Um, and it's just a great reference. It gives you a little bio. It gives you some of their the works to look out for. Um, they have quotes throughout. Um, you know, it's, it, I wouldn't say this is one that you want to read all the way through. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a put down, pick up, but it's going to be detrimental entirely to your TBR. Uh, you, you'll add way too much. But a good follow-up to this is the next book, part of the Palgrave Gothic series. And this is by Dara Downey, uh, American Women's Ghost Stories in the Gilded Age. Um, I thought this is a terrific piece of literary scholarship. Uh, she, she looks at the writings, the ghost story writings, of women in especially the late 1800s, very early 1900s, um, and she looks at how it connects to and it evokes commodities, how women's fates in those stories were often tied to material possessions, to the houses, to the things in the houses. The women were seen as almost an extension of the house, um, trapped within the domestic sphere. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, you know, sometimes literary scholarship is hit or miss for me. <laughs> it depends on where they take it, but this is exactly the kind that I like. Uh, this will undoubtedly not be a cheap book. Um, I was lucky to get this on a sale that Palgrave had, so I got it for a very affordable price. Uh, but if you buy this regularly, it's going to be probably beyond your price range. But if you ever do see it, and that sounds interesting, uh, keep on the lookout for it. And the last one, um, getting really into horror cinema this time, uh, a very fun book that I love, <laughs> uh, Phantom Ladies, Hollywood Horror and the Homefront by Tim Snelson. And this is published by Rutgers University Press. And this looks at uh, the, the horror industry during the war years, during World War II, when so many men were overseas. And women found that they had a lot of free time on the home front. Uh, so they started going to movies more, uh, movies together, um, going to movies unaccompanied by a man, which was something very different back then. And... Um, Hollywood took notice of that, and they started making films that would appeal more to women, with women protagonists. Uh, and during the war years, you have strong female characters, and you have more romanticism in there, and ghosts, and things like that. And then when the war years end, and the men come back, we see a dramatic shift there. Um, so, it's my last recommendation. Uh, Phantom Ladies by Tim Snelson. And that's it. Uh, those are the, the six books. Uh, very quick recommendation for... Um, Women's History Month, okay, here in the U.S. Uh, so, any of those sound interesting, uh, please look them up. All right, thank you, Bluetooth.